Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Today is Double Hermitcraft upload day and this is the second episode and we're going to be taking a break from working on the house in the village. We're going to come over here and work on the mob spawner because I think it's about time that we got this thing finished. Now the reason I've been putting it off is because uh, we've got the valve system and I've always been worried that one of the new things that we add to this will take up a lot of space and mean we have to rebuild whatever it is we do over here but enough's enough I think it's time that we just get on with it and build it and I've got everything in mind um, the redstone is one thing we need to do to control the valves and I think we're just going to use um, that uh, what's it called not the T flip flop um, it's like a selection array um, Cube Hamster showed it in an episode of sharing is caring and what we'll have is like a panel here with a bunch of buttons and we can just select which one of these we want to use. Now the other thing we need to do before we do that is actually fix this because we have the problem where no matter how we set this up we're always going to have a water source block here and it's going to mean that the mobs won't flow round the corner into this valve when that one's activated. They're going to get caught in the water here and drown which is a real annoyance so I need to find a solution for that and someone has sent me a video response I haven't had the time to check it out but I'm gonna go check that out now otherwise I'm gonna to have to stand here and think about it for a while um, but hopefully that solution will work and if we can implement it it means we can go ahead and build all of the redstone and then once we've done that what I want to do is finish covering up this place with dirt and I want to rebuild our XP farm and I think I mentioned this in the last episode or maybe one of the ones before but I had the idea to build like a, a mini jungle biome over here and put a bunch of jungle trees down and have some really big tall ones just around the XP farm and we can kind of hook it up so this becomes um, like a feature in the middle of the jungle and we could put some like branches coming out from the trees that kind of support the XP farm and if we do it right I think it will look real good so it's going to be a challenge um, but as I said first of all we should get this valve system fixed. So we have a solution for our valve system here and I've got to say thank you for Taping for posting a video response for the solution. I also accidentally broke a bit of glass here. I'm surprised that water didn't decide to flow out either. But anyway, the solution is to use fence gates. So the main problem that we have is that we want to repeat this pattern here with the water and the sign. Um, but we can't do that here because we would place a sign on that block which is where we have our piston extending to stop the mobs and make them flow into the valve. So by using the fence gates we can basically do what the piston does and the sign in one block so we'll be able to control where the water goes and allow the mobs through and then we can close the fence gate and also stop the mobs from going through and redirect them into the valve. So one thing we have to do is though place them the other way around because if we put them like they are or like this one is here and um, then the hitbox of it is in the middle of the block so the mobs will flow down and they'll kind of get caught on the hitbox and won't be able to flow back round into this valve. Now there's also going to be a challenge with wiring because we're going to need to power this block here and we have no space to work with underneath and that's how we powered them in his video but we don't have that luxury so it might involve removing this block here and just having a bit of redstone dust that gets powered from a torch above um, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to implement as well. So there is a saying that everything that can go wrong will go wrong and that feels quite relevant at the moment and I've just run into some problems with powering this. Now what was happening before is that both of these would open and close at the same time which would render this useless because the mobs would either get trapped here or the valve system wouldn't work at all because they could go straight through here. Um, but we are very fortunate. I thought that this was the top of the mob spawner but it turns out we've got an extra block to work with so we can power directly to this block here which means these won't open and close at the same time but unfortunately this is right in the way so we're going to have to remove this and I thought that would be a problem but it isn't really it just means we've got to rebuild a little bit of this and put it further down the line so what I plan on doing now is finishing up the wiring for this getting it as compact as possible so we can have some flexibility with other redstone that we want to place around it like this and then just build that for the whole valve system going down to the end so we don't have to encounter these kind of problems again. Okay I've really had enough we're going to be changing the whole valve system now. I've ripped this thing apart and what I've realized is that for each little section that we have like this we need a solid wall on either side of it so that the water doesn't spill out anywhere and that would mean there's no space to put the redstone. Um, so I thought about maybe doing something different on these two like making it so that there's a bit of a mob evator and then they go off in different directions but that's just gonna 
take up space and not really be a clever way of doing it. So I think what I'm going to do is make this so that we have three blocks in between each of our valves rather than two. And I'm going to move this back by one. I think that's possible. Um, yeah, it should be fine because then it goes straight into the mob evader and the mobs are just going to go up there. So yeah, I'm going to work on that. Hopefully that will go without another hitch because we've had so many so far. It's really winding me up. So it looks like our valve system is going to be okay after all. I decided to do this by moving this one here back by one block. So that's why the water source is over here. There's a sign and two fence gates to hold that in place. And that means that I don't have to reposition the whole of this tunnel. So this is where the next valve is going to be. And then the one after that will be here. And then the one after that will be there, I think. So we're going to have to move this back as well. And that's not going to be a problem because we can just redirect the water around the back to the same point anyway so that's going to stay intact and the way this works is we have um, some wiring in between the gap that we now have because we've made it an extra block wide um, that's this bit right here and this is the wall of the other uh, the other valve so that's why we have these stairs here to keep the wall intact but allow the redstone to come from underneath up to the top here so um, this bit here controls the trap door and then you can see that we invert the signal by powering this block as well is that one and there's a spider up there that's what I've been hearing for the last few minutes and there you go now that we've changed it the mobs are going to go round into the valve I need to put a block of water right there we'll do that quickly otherwise I might forget and they'll go into the mob evader and straight up so now all I've got to do is build the rest of this okay it's finished I fixed everything and it all works I've been testing it as I go along and there's only one minor little hiccup which is this thing down the end here now this would be AFK mode and what you don't want is water uh, where you're standing because that will mean your hunger will go down over time um, so what we had before was a sign but if we put one there then the water is just going to flow straight and not at a diagonal so it won't push the items round um, the corner I thought that wasn't a problem for a second because we're going to be standing here but the problem with that is when we switch into the other mode that sign is still going to be there and then the items are just going to gather over there but since I only use it like this I'm just going to leave it like that for now maybe at another time a solution will pop into my head so we've got one little thing to do there and the other little job that we have to do on another time is to put the pumpkin dispenser back in that bit over there so what we can do now is build the redstone which I want to put over here so we're going to have like a control panel where we press buttons and activate the different valves and then we're going to run the redstone wires across we're going to run them across the top here and they're going to go over to each of these and the one that's on is the valve that's open so that's the only one that's open at the moment and then when they're all off like this it means they're going to flow all the way down to the end so we also need to include an option where you basically press a button and it doesn't activate any of the redstone running over the top here so that they can all be off as well um, so that's what I'm going to build and I'll show you it when it's done so I know it's not finished but I wanted to show you um, what I'm doing at the moment. This selector is almost finished, we need to put some redstone lamps up the top here and then that shows us what selection we've chosen. For example, we've chosen that one, that wasn't a good choice. There you go, you can see the blocks retracted so the redstone lamp in the middle would then be turned off. Um, but round the side here we're going to need to do some terraforming to cover up all of this and that's what I'm getting worried about at the moment because the way the wiring is going to go along the back here we're going to do probably too much terraforming we're going to end up with like a bit of a cliff face over here and it will probably look quite unnatural and obvious that it's hiding something so I want to try a different type of wiring what I've gone for here is to separate each of the wires because they're all next to each other so it would be very easy for them to uh, cross over so for example that repeater is there because this repeater powers this block so it powers the wire next to it um, so what we'd be doing is putting a wire going up there, then one along here, then one on top of this one which would have um, blocks on either side of it to separate it from the other wires and it just gets bulky and goes all over the place. So what we're going to try and do is send all of the signals down the same redstone wire. So we're going to have one redstone wire that goes out to the middle here roughly to around where the signal ends and then we're going to build one of Cube Hamster's decoders and what that should do is allow us to send uh, multiple inputs down one signal to the output so I'm going to try and build that and if it works then I can explain to you how it does so I don't think I really have the space to actually fit this in here and then I realized that we're going to have the same problem we had over there 
where all of our outputs are going to be directly next to each other so it looks like I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board here uh, maybe I can separate each of the signals using redstone torches we can kind of get the wires further apart from each other quicker and maybe in less space so yeah I'll give that a try so the wiring is now finished and I really wanted this to look nice and compact it's always good when redstone looks cool but sometimes you've just got to get a signal from A to B and it looks a bit messy now you may notice there's a repeater over here as well the only reason that this is here is because I've used um, the inverting of the signal to extend the signal you can see I've, if this was just a normal wire here it wouldn't reach all the way along um, so this one gets inverted from the get-go you can see there's a redstone torch there so that's why there's this lone repeater um, but it all works I have just checked it and that was clever and I guess it means next we can work on this front area here I'm going to tidy up this and make it look nice and make this an area to be to come and use all of these farms and I had another idea as well that we could add some um, signs that have no not signs what am I talking about um, item frames we'll have some item frames across the front which represent each of these now I think it's possible to get an XP bottle from a villager by trading so that could be one thing we could put in there we could put a pumpkin head in to represent the arena and um, we could put maybe gunpowder to represent our AFK item system you know there's a whole bunch of items we could use to represent each thing and what the other two valves are going to be used for I'm not sure though I did have an idea to make a filtering system using a cat so that we can just farm gunpowder uh, gun which isn't really any quicker than farming it with that thing at the end there so I kind of went off that idea um, but yeah enough rambling I've got some terraforming to do over the side here and then we'll tidy up the inside Looks like we got a lot more terraforming to do than I originally anticipated. It seems like a lot of projects that I do lately just get bigger and bigger and I probably just don't really grasp the scope of them early on. Um, but this is going to be like our working area for all of this. I don't think there's too much more that's going to tie into this other than a selection area. Um, an XP farm which I want to put here so we'll bring that instead of going across that way we'll bring it all the way across over here and drop down into this little area which I might make different I'm not sure I'm kind of just trying to get something that matches at the moment so I want to put a roof across the top of here and I'm thinking I want to have a nice pattern on top of it which means that our terraforming has to go even higher and cover all of this but the entrance I think I want to put here um, actually we need we need to do up this so it, it's more noticeable that there's a way down here and then I think we'll have the entrance maybe not as wide so it just goes from here to here so you don't walk over and straight down into this bit and then we'll kind of terraform around the entrance so it's like a cove or something like that so you can walk up to this what will turn into somewhat of a hill or a mountain and then there'll be a nice coved entrance here for you to walk through into this area um, but at the moment it just looks a bit bare with the woods and stone bricks which is why I want to put a pattern into the ceiling I just fell all the way down here <laughs> and I thought I was going to die and now I've got Feather Falling 4 on and I must have taken about 3 hearts no sorry I had about 3 hearts left and we are at Y5 so I'm pretty sure that's a full of over 64 blocks but um, I'm going to make my way back up to the top and the only way I can actually think of doing that is by breaking into the mob spawner but then I've just realised we can break into the side here as well and just walk back out so it's from around here that I fell down and you can see that would have been over 70 blocks which seems ridiculous and I have never tested um, how far you can fall with feather falling but that must have been a bug um, but this right here I'm just really not feeling it um, where can we start well these bits here kind of give a different shape to the room the way they go in a bit and I like that and then it's all different over on this side stone brick goes all the way up to the top without that kind of indent and it just doesn't really seem that aesthetically pleasing which is obviously important that's why we build like this and the ceiling as well I did say I wanted to put a pattern in there and there wasn't really any space for it so I think it's best to take a break that usually helps you know you come back to it and you've got more ideas fresh ideas mainly and the co thing at the front as well just wasn't working out but I do like this glass roof on this bit here that just adds a little extra to this and if we were to turn off the lights inside the spawner and I'll tell you what before we do that we should set it to AFK mode. Let's just go and check that that worked. 
I'm getting a little paranoid because I uh, only just started using this. Yep, they're all open. And if we turn on the mob spawner, the mobs will start spawning fairly quickly. Now there's a little bit of lag while all the lights turn on. And I haven't seen it like that yet. That looks pretty cool. I've got a feeling though that some of the light levels up here might interfere with that down there. Probably does. Either way, that's cool how you can look into that. Um, so yeah, anyway, we should just take a break from working on this bit. Put down some torches so that mobs don't spawn. That's something I've noticed I've been doing with the terraforming. You take away a lot of dirt and then you place it all back down and you forget to put torches and mobs can spawn. I've just noticed a little problem here. The water on that side flows straight across. Now I think that's because it's connecting with this source block up here. Um, so that is possibly pushing them in that way a little bit. That's going to be hard to tell. We've got to look out for that. But I do have a solution for this. We're going to take a block out on this side over here and run some water around into it so when it connects with that bit there it will push its water flow at a diagonal and then this guy should get pushed back this way but it will be interesting to see what happens because like I said I've got a feeling this one might be pushing down to the side now as well um, alternatively it just popped into my head we could just block that up with some blocks and that should be fine yeah so this appears to be fixed and right as I hit record it just started or is it fixed? Uh, it is hard to tell what they're actually doing there. I'll keep my eye on that. This guy appears to now be at the top. Can he get through? I don't think he can. Okay, well I'm going to have to keep my eye on that but that's... Oh yeah, you can hear they're taking damage now as well. So that is not good. Hmm. Well, anyway, um, what I was going to say is I had to go all the way over there to fix that and then on my way back I kind of saw the entrance from a distance and I thought that maybe it would be a good idea to have a big open entrance and then we can not really worry too much about the terraforming around it. Um, the entrance will kind of be built with pillars, I'd imagine, on either side and then we can put lots of jungle trees around it and have some vines hanging down. So it's kind of... It's kind of there but it's hidden a little bit by the trees that we're going to be placing down and I do plan on putting quite a few trees around here because if we just had a couple by themselves it would look fairly odd so we're probably going to go for say three or four big ones in the middle and then lots of smaller ones around the outside as well. There we go you can see this is now working what I've done is I've moved the source block back by one and we've got all the blocks across there freed up so it can flow at a diagonal into this source block here and it works just fine which is great uh, because that is all I have time to do um, it takes me a lot longer to record two episodes back to back than it does doing the one so let me uh, know if you like it or not double hermit craft perhaps we'll do it more often uh, but other than that thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time